why we are highlighting so much about the breech delivery itself you know when the normal vertex delivery is occurring the hardest and the least uh, compressible part that is the head comes out first followed by all the rest of the other structure which are compressible and they are relatively smaller whereas in breech smallest and the softest one comes out first followed by harder hardest so we don't know whether the outcome would be always good or will there be any problem for the delivery of the hard part that is the head so and the delay in the delivery of the head can be detrimental to the life of the baby so with this in mind we are more worried about the outcome in breach in vertex presentation head can mold and come out even if the passage is small here there is no time for molding if we give so much of time for molding the baby can have a severe asphyxia right so second stage duration cannot be too much here so that is the problem with breach delivery normally if you look at the incidence preterm is the commonest cause for breach right at 28 weeks if you keep examining all the pregnant mothers 20% can have breech presentation whereas at term it comes to about 4% and depending on where exactly if you look at the baby like this you know in breech presentation we take sacrum as the denominator the sacrum being the denominator in which quadrant of the pelvis the sacrum is sitting so if the baby is sitting like this you know these are the four quadrants of the pelvis right posterior left posterior left left anterior and right anterior if the sacrum is like this baby is sitting like this this becomes right sacro anterior if it is sitting like this it becomes left sacro posterior so depending on where this sacrum is facing so this will be left sacro anterior so this way you have got four positions breech presentation and lie if you look at the lie in breech it is always longitudinal so lie does not change but the position like you have got occipital anterior and occipital posterior here you have sacro anterior and sacro posterior depending on whether it is right or left you have got right sacro anterior left sacro anterior so lsa lsp rsa and rsp are the positions in term pregnancy the incidence is anywhere between 3 to 4% causes of breech presentation the maternal causes are in grand multis because of the available space um, the baby can persist in breech presentation previous breech presentations any pelvic tumor fibroid or ovarian tumor which prevents the movement of the baby inside anomalies of the uterus like unicorniate uterus bicornuate uterus septate uterus wherein the baby has to accommodate itself to the available space then contracted pelvis less liker or more liker which either prevents the baby from moving or gives lot of freedom for the baby to move coming to placental causes cornua fundal insertion of the placenta you have the uterus like this whenever the placenta is inserted to the cornua fundal region the fundal region has got less space so head feels more comfortable here and the breech occupies the lower pole right and placenta previa again for the same reason placenta is sitting here so baby is probably comfortable in any of the positions so malpresentations and breech also is more common in Uh, placenta previa fetal causes whenever there is hydrocephalus you know breech is broader head is smaller so if there is hydrocephalus you know head becomes larger and compared to that breech is smaller so the smaller breech comfortably sits in the lower pole of the uterus and hydrocephalic head feels more comfortable at the fundus this is just an accommodation right anencephaly babies also can uh, present with breech presentation prematurity i just told you because premature babies the head to body ratio is always more than one head is 
larger and as the baby matures the head starts becoming smaller and compact in trisomy 13 18 21 there could be uh, breech presentation so if you analyze the causes for breech presentation it could be a favorable adaptation or there could be fetal anomalies so favorable adaptation i just told you hydrocephalus contracted pelvis placenta previa and cornuvo fundal insertion of the placenta depending on the space available and these things because of the anomalies increased mobility of the fetus especially in polyhydramnios multiparous and also in preterm and if there is something which prevents the movement of the baby normally by 34 to 36 weeks most of the babies will revert spontaneously all the breech will become vertex by term but breech if there is with extended legs the turning may not be very comfortable multiple pregnancy no space for turning oligohydramnios when the cord is very short again the freedom of movement is less intrauterine death baby will not be able to move it remains stationary and also clubbed with oligohydramnios and uterine anomalies also will prevent from spontaneous turning the other way of classifying breech is uncomplicated breech complicated breech and abnormal breech right uncomplicated breech is it is not associated with any other complication is just breech presentation breech with some other complication like twins placenta previa previous cesarean section etc all these things become complicated breech abnormal breech is when the problem is there in the baby right extended arms cord prolapse these are abnormal breech presentations so you have uh, different types of breech depending on the attitude of the joints so here we take the attitude of knee joint and hip joint hip joints both sides are flexed but knee joints are extended right so hip joint flexed and knee joint extended you have the buttocks in the lower pole sacrum is felt this is called incomplete breech right if this knee joint also is flexed and hip joint also is flexed then when you do a pv you feel the feet and the buttocks right so this is called a complete breech just like vertex all flexed it's a complete breech if there is extension of the knee joint but flexion of the hip joint it becomes a uh, incomplete breech sometimes hips are extended but knee is flexed in this case knee is the presenting part so it becomes knee presentation and sometimes baby is like this totally standing all hip joint and knee joints are also extended this becomes a footling presentation so in breech you have got complete breech incomplete breech then knee presentation and uh, footling presentation depending on the flexion and extension at hip and knee joint and it could be unilateral or bilateral also so this is a complete breech in which knee is flexed hip is flexed here you see knee is extended hip is flexed but here it is unilateral here both knees are extended and uh, hips are all well flexed so this is a frank breech and here it is footling one foot is down right so how do we diagnose diagnosis of breech is by your clinical examination when you find the bellotable smaller globular part in the fundal grip and you find broader non independently bellotable soft mass in the lower grip that is pelvic grip then you are going to make a diagnosis of uh, breech presentation suspect and very usually the fhs is usually heard at the level of umbilicus or above the level of umbilicus but please take it from me any case of malpresentation has to be confirmed by an ultrasound scan and ultrasound scan will confirm mri is not mandatory it is just for uh, uh, say research purpose and 
pelvic examination uh, should be able to give us a clue that we are dealing with breech presentations right in breech presentation uh, the confusion will be there whenever you are confusing it with face presentation because ischial tuberosity and malar eminences look similar genitals can be uh, confused with nose anus orifice and mouth orifice and uh, the relation between these malar eminence and the anus or malar eminence, uh, the ischial tuberosities and the anus, this relation either triangular or straight line will tell us and you know additional information after the membranes have ruptured, if you have put your hand in the hole that you are getting, if it is stained with meconium, then if it grips your finger, it could be anus. If you feel a suckling movement, it is probably mouth and you can also feel the malar, alveolar margins, alveolar margins, the gums you can feel. This tells that it is probably face. So this is what I meant.